everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week I am going to be continuing on with the Gilded Age Christmas dress bustle project. I know, you're seeing this after Christmas and frankly, even by the time that I'm filming this, although it is still before Christmas right now, this is not going to get done by Christmas. Like, there is almost no way. I would love to say that I'm finishing this project in this video, but considering my parents are coming to visit and like stay up with me for the Christmas week and they are coming in just four days, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be able to finish this by Christmas. But we're going to pretend right now that that's what we're working towards and maybe it will happen. So since the last video, all I have done is all of the hand sewing on this bodice. So much hand sewing. I've done all of the binding. I know at the end of the last video I showed you a little bit of the binding, but that is now all complete top and bottom. And I also have put on all of the hooks and all of the bars for the closure. So that means that really all the bodice needs now are sleeves and the trim around the neck. So we are going to start with sleeves because that is more important. And from the same pattern that I created to make the Victorian bodices that I make, I also had created a sleeve pattern. Now that said, this is for basically a fitted sleeve, like with a little bit of easing in the sleeve. And actually, if we look at this fashion plate, despite the fact that this is from 1883, and I feel like gathered sleeves were not necessarily a thing in 1883, this fashion plate has puffed sleeves. So I think that I want to just take this pattern, which is a two piece sleeve pattern, and make it a puffed sleeve because going off the top of my head, I don't think that I have a two piece sleeve puffed sleeve pattern. And I feel like that is still what they would have used at this point. And we're not talking like puffed as much as 1890s. This is still a relatively small puff. So I think that just by slashing and spreading this sleeve cap right here, we can get to the puff that I need. So if you've never looked at slashing and spreading before, basically what happens is you would literally, I mean, if you wanted to, you would cut little slashes into this pattern, spread them out, and then kind of connect the dots so that you get a wider and puffed sleeve. However, I don't want to do anything like that to this pattern. So what I do honestly is I eyeball it and I lay this out on my like mock-up fabric and I just make it go out wider up top, make this top a little taller usually, and connect the dots that way. So that's what I'm going to do with this. This is also a three-quarter sleeve so we don't need the bottom part of this, but I think that that will work. So let's go ahead and make a sleeve mock-up. So sleeve mock-up is on and I think it's a fairly close match to the sleeve in the fashion plate right here, but I just feel like there's maybe not quite enough volume going around right here. Like that poof seems like it starts literally like right here and it's fitted here and then it kind of poofs here and I think it's just not like there is some there and there's obviously the poof up here, but I feel like there's just not quite quite enough there. So I think that I need to probably just open up the sleeve just a little bit, like right at the top. I don't know, what is that? Like three inches of the seams, probably both back and front, and just make that a little bit wider. And I think that would give me the right shape. So it's very close. However, there is one concerning thing happening here that you might notice on this side that you don't actually see on the side where I'm shaking my cat's paw because she wants attention. This side, I'm getting so much crumpling right here. And now the chemise that I'm wearing with this, it's awful. Like I made the arm size way too small. And so I can't tell right now, is it what I'm feeling right here, which is pinching in my arm, is that because it's my chemise or is that because it's the bodice? I'm thinking it's both to be honest. And I think that that is what's causing this. I think we're actually too far out. I know I extended it farther out in the last bodice video. And I think in the front it's gone too far. So I think I need to cut away the bodice just a little bit, move the sleeve a little bit further up my shoulder. And I think that that will alleviate that. 
I don't think it's a problem in the back. I think the back width is fine. It's literally just right here. And I have been needing to fix this chemise too. Haven't gotten to it yet. And now we have the problem of I can't tell which one is causing the problem because I do feel it on both sides. It's not just the side with the sleeve. The other thing is that I am going to need to wear a corset cover with this. I'm not currently wearing a corset cover. You can really see the harsh edge of the corset right there. This of course will all be filled in, but I think that that's going to be obvious no matter what. So I'll need to wear a corset cover with this. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut this in a little bit more, reattach the sleeve and see if that fixes anything. I have moved the arm side in just a little bit. I have not cut away the excess material yet, but I do think that it is looking a little better. Though the other thing that I did is that I have actually shoved just a little bit of batting right in here, which was very, very common to have padding in bodices. You see it throughout history. I mean, in the 1840s, it was like padding but you see it later like through the bustle era through the 1890s 1900s even just because not all women are shaped the way that the bodices wanted to be shaped to make things very nice and smooth and round and so you would often see padding in this area so that might be what I wind up doing we'll see kind of you know if it needs it once I'm all done I can just sew a tiny little pad in there but yeah I think that will be enough to proceed with I'm going to go ahead and just cut the final sleeve a little bit bigger in those sections because even this mock-up we're close enough I just want a little bit more to be gathered into that arm's eye there so yeah we're gonna go with this I like the length of this too by the way it is a three-quarter length sleeve this is just gonna get turned up with bias tape and then the trim applied to the edge of the sleeve as well as around the neckline and of course we do have to add the bodice like neckline filler part as well so yeah pretty good for the mock-up I'd say so I don't know how helpful this is since it wasn't like this was a commercial pattern in the first place, but I just wanted to show you the changes that I'm making to this sleeve. So this is the one that I initially started with, and then this is my mock up here. So you can see just how much bigger that got. And then this is what I'm going to cut the actual out of. Though I think I'm probably going to smooth out this line just a little bit because it seems really steep right now, now that I'm looking at it drawn on. But yeah, it'll be smoothed out just a bit there. You can see that it extends out this way as well. This one's much smoother on this side. And then it does go up just a tiny bit just to make a nice even curve around the top. So that is our new sleeve shape. And ta-da! It doesn't fit the dress form at all, but we have sleeves. They still need to be finished at the edge and trim needs to be added. And obviously trim needs to be added to the neckline as well. But we have some nice puffed sleeves going on here. And I think they look pretty great. I did not do any special attention to pattern matching, so... I mean, it was close. Like I kind of looked at it when I cut it out, but I wasn't trying to be super exacting because I don't think it's very obvious on this really small uh, check here. So yeah, close enough. And now I will put some bias binding on the edge of the sleeves to turn those up. And then we can look at some trim. So as you can see right here, the skirt is now bustled. And I want to show you how I actually got this to work because it took quite a bit of finagling around to get the tapes to really be in place. So let's take a look at the inside. This is what the inside of this looks like. So there are actually five separate tapes, two on each side, one in the center that are then attached down into the body of the skirt to help it to stay up. And they're attached in multiple places. So I find that with bustle tapes, you can actually sew these by machine, which is what you're seeing right here, because the part that is actually attached is going to basically come up and be hidden within all of the folds of the skirt. So all of these are just twill tapes right here. I fold down the edges. I sew those in by machine right along the stitch line for the waistband. So you don't really see them from the outside, you know, even if the waistband were actually showing. And then I kind of just pin up when it's facing out, obviously not inside out like this, but I pin up to see how long I'm going to need the tapes to be and where I might need the skirt to be attached from the outside. And then I just sew those places in place. So the center is pretty easy. You just want to make sure that you keep it on green 
screen. I know it doesn't look like it right now because it's all kind of like folding every which way, but this is actually straight down the pattern. Doing this on plaid does make it much, much easier because then I can also do the same thing on one side and count my squares to figure out exactly where I am on this side to get it to transfer to the other side. So this one again is attached right here. It's also attached here. So that's creating two little puffs in the center. And then the next one that I did was actually this one right here, which again is attached in two places, creating two little puffs. This one's a little bit interesting because this one, the skirt is actually twisted like this as it's attached, whereas like the center one, we're just doing straight down and the bottom part is just straight, but this part is twisted to pull that up more interestingly. And then this tape was the more challenging part. What this is actually attaching is the fold back. I'll show you when I put this back right sides out, but it's the fold back of the skirt and that is being attached through the body part of the skirt. So we do get a little pickup and then also the fold back. And again, then I just transferred those to this side to get everything to be even. So let me put that back on right sides out and we'll take a look at what that really translates to. So here we are right sides out again. You can see when we're looking at the center one, here is our first attachment right in there. I mean, even looking at it, it's hard to see and I have it still marked with pen, but it's right there. And as you can see, that gets covered over. So it doesn't matter that we sewed that by machine. And then we have our second pickup much farther down, which is down in here right there. And again, that gets covered over with the folds of fabric. And then over here, this is a little funky because we actually don't see the farthest out tape attachments at all. They're all kind of underneath where the pullback has come to, but the pullback is coming around like this and gets just kind of sucked up there, if you will, and attached right in here. And so that is going through multiple layers of fabric. So we've got a couple folds going on there. And yeah, that just creates the overall look like that. And then of course the bow sash bit will wind up on top of that. So now that the skirt is all bustled up, I was able to do the hem. So I've turned this all by hand, but I did actually have to cut a shape into this a little bit as well. So you can see some of that curve going on here. Basically, I cut off stuff that was touching the ground or that was a few inches touching the ground because it was completely dragging on the ground before, like this corner basically. And I just curved off this corner. However, because this falls in like different ways back to front, I actually flipped the direction of hem. I probably didn't need to do this, but that meant that up here, the hem would be turned in from the turn back. So we have it all turned the opposite direction here. And then when we get down to the corner, I actually have it going the other way because the bulk of the bottom of the hem faces inwards. So yeah, if you look right here, one hem is going one way, the other hem is going the other way. So just a little kind of extra detail I did. Of course, if I had lined it, I wouldn't need to worry about that, but that is what that looks like. I also finally got the closures on the bow section here. So I was kind of going back and forth about what would make the most sense because these parts right here, this is actually part of the sash, whereas this is the back bow piece. And remember, I wanted to get this to be all separate so that I could wear just the bow or just the sash or all of it together in various parts. So this is the part that does snap onto the waistband. You can see the snaps right there. But then this part right here actually hooks onto the back bow. So we've got a hook and bar right here. I'm not 100% positive if this will actually need one additional tack to basically have it tacked this way so that it always stays like that. I'm not sure if otherwise the hook might have a chance to slip out of the bar that is right in there. So we'll have to see how that goes once I actually try that on. But yeah, it just hooks together like that so that it can all be worn in a different combination way each time. And also the sleeves of the bodice are now hemmed with bias tape, just like I did the neckline and the hem of the bodice. 
But unfortunately, that is all that I was able to get to in the week, both kind of leading up to slash Christmas week, both before and then while my parents were here. So that means there are basically three things left to do on this entire project that will be in one more final video and I am absolutely determined that it will only take one video to finish this outfit and that I will be taking these pictures in just a few days from when I'm filming this now not from when you're seeing this hopefully by the time you're seeing this everything's gonna be done but you're gonna get one more video out of this so basically what is left is that I still have to do the neckline fill-in area which includes kind of a tiny little collar on that I obviously have to do the trim that's going around the neckline and also the sleeves and then I still don't have that red band that goes on the bottom of the overskirt so that still has to happen too now obviously when I first announced this project and talked to you guys about it I did mention doing a sort of over bodice that I could alternatively wear that would be out of the red fabric um I don't know if you guessed this because I haven't talked about it in a long time yeah that's been scrapped for actually a while once I realized just how long this project was taking me and especially when I realized that it was not going to get done by Christmas I scrapped that red bodice I don't want to put it out of the possibility that I might do it sometime in the future but it is not happening for this so I'm just doing the actual fashion plate of course I should also figure out what I'm gonna wear on my head but to be perfectly honest I'm probably not gonna be wearing this outfit for an actual event until the Victorian festival at the end of April so I have a really long time to figure out headwear and honestly I think I have hats that are pretty similar to the hat that we see in the fashion plate here so I have a feeling I will just be able to pick a hat out of my myriad of hat boxes that you never get to see but they are lining the top of my walls right up against the ceiling in here I did show them off in my initial like sewing room tour video a long time time ago but yeah that's how I store my hats and so there's a ton of them up here so yeah not quite done with this this project is taking forever but that's okay we are gonna finish it before New Year's it's gonna happen so thank you so much for bearing with me with this really really long project here that is taking way more videos than I had anticipated if you enjoyed this video please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon and if you'd like to see more videos like this from me please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and sometimes additional costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have linked to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks or join my YouTube channel memberships right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Jean, Janelle, and Dan. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!